If you want the all-around best comms-capable electronic hearing protection, the choice is clear. Peltor Comtex. But if you want a comms-capable headset that doesn't cost $600, you might do what I did and buy some surplus single-com MSA Swordens on eBay for like 200 bucks. Out of the box, the older model MSA Swordens are pretty awful. The ones I got have the boom mic and a single TP120 NATO down lead, which is the one you want. If you do buy Mystery Meat Swordens on eBay, make sure you do not get the 6-pin Limo plug version. Those are straight up useless. What makes Swordens bad is that they're extremely uncomfortable and don't offer much in the way of noise reduction. The sound amplification is decent. It certainly sounds better than my Walker's Razer headset, but wearing the Swordens for about 20 minutes gives me a splitting headache and it doesn't do enough to protect my sensitive earballs from the sound of short-barreled AR pistols with D-bag brakes on them, which is pretty much all we shoot these days. Replacing the shitty foam ear pads with gel cups is a good start. You can get the Sword and Hygiene kit that includes gel cups and swap them out in a few minutes. This makes the headset more comfortable, and the gel cups provide a better seal to your head, which also improves the noise reduction qualities of the headset. Gel cups are an excellent upgrade for any headset, by the way. I have noise fighter gel cups on my Razer headset, and I can wear that thing all day without any discomfort. The noise fighters claim to have channels that interface properly with glasses or eye protection. That's a load of bullshit. I don't know how they think glasses work, but the stems do not go there. Whatever, it's still comfortable enough with glasses or eye protection. Back to the Swordens. Even with the gel cup upgrade, the headset still gives me a righteous headache, and when I took the included headband off, I figured out why. The cable that connects the two sides together is routed through the headband, and for some ineffable reason, the cable routing on the headband is on the bottom instead of the top. When you put the headset on, the whole weight of it is resting on the cable where it crosses from the top to the bottom of the band. These two pressure points line up almost perfectly with your temples. My god, it's the most miserable experience in the world. We can fix this in two ways. One is to just remove the cable from the routing channel at the bottom of the headband pad and instead run it along the top of the headband. The Velcro pad holds it all in place and you're still able to adjust the headset like normal. Another option is to get a replacement headband pad like the one Faro Concepts makes. It's a very similar design to their plate carrier shoulder pads. The Faro headband has more padding than the original and it is also a great place to tuck the comms down lead when you're not using it. 30 bucks and 5 minutes later, the classic MSA Sword and Migraine is solved. Not bad. Of course, it's still no match for the contacts. The sound amplification quality and the noise reduction isn't as good. But you might not notice over the sound of 400 extra dollars in your pocket. Okay, see you later. I can feel it in my teeth. <laughs> By the way, I don't hate Ferro Concepts, if you're wondering. I don't even hate the Slickster. I just think that Slick Carriers are kind of not a good idea. Okay, bye.